Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Coffee Open Source, a place where we can chat with great folks and learn some things along the way. I got my coffee ready, so let's get started. Today, I'm super excited because it's finally happening. I feel like with this guest, we've been trying to get her for a while, and we've had to reschedule a few times, but my guest today is Tracy Lee. Tracy, say hello, introduce yourself. Hello, it's so nice to meet everybody. My name is Tracy. I'm the CEO of a company called This That Labs. We're a 50 person consultancy focused on JavaScript. I'm also a Microsoft MVP, Google developer expert, um, and I'm on the ArcGIS core team. So basically, na name your community award and you have it. I don't have a lot of them, actually. So I'm not like an Auth0 ambassador. <laughs> I'm not a uh, Cloudinary media develop developer expert. I'm not a Twilio, whatever they call them. So, you know, it's- Not all it's, of them. Right, but it, it, you know, it's, it's that like, uh, what is it? Comparison is the peep of joy, right? Yeah. So I look at all these other people, I'm like, oh man, they have all these things. Like, how do I get all of them? And who has the energy? Yeah, it's one, of those, it's one of those <laughs> things where it's like, if you have so many things that it's hard for you to like craft your Twitter bio, which is supposed to be very right. short, right? You're like, oh no, I mean, I, uh, I care too much about this thing. But yeah, like there's Kubernetes, uh, um, I don't remember what they're called. AWS, or AWS has one. Um, right. Yeah, I think there, at a point in time, a lot, of, a lot of big companies decided like, let's give community members some form of like recognition, which is awesome. But then it turned right. into this thing where now everybody kind of collects like their little badges, right? Um, right, not to, right. not to discount some of the great work that some folks do in the open source and community world, but I feel like yeah. there is a lot of collecting that happens with these sort of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. but you know, whatever people want to do to, you know, feel like they're bringing value to the, the community is awesome. So like that, obviously there's a lot of things that you've done in the community, right? I'd like to kind of talk about first, you know, how you got started. Like, I know you've probably done like how I got started in tech, like, you know, yeah. speech a few times, but I want to put yeah. a little spin on it. Do you remember the first time that you actually came across something that was open source? Maybe you didn't know it was open source at the time or, um, you know, basically something that, you know, acted as a catalyst for you to find interest in, you know, giving back in the community that is, you know, open source software. So, um, I have a funny story about how I started. Basically I had a, I had a boyfriend and he did JavaScript okay. and he was wearing this shirt and it was the Ember Tom store. I was like, oh, that's a cute little, cute little character, you know? <laughs> and he, and he, he was talking about JavaScript and I was like, oh, like Java, you know, like I yeah. was literally there. And, um, you know, he's like, oh, you know, look at all these cool people on Twitter, blah, 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 whatever. And so I was just like, well, let's just like, okay, that's, that's like the people you want to hang out with. Like, let's, let's hang out with people, you know? Sure. So I was like, well, if he likes Ember, let me like dive into the Ember community. Mm -hmm. So I think my first experience in JavaScript was very much open source generally. I was like, oh, community, okay. let's build it, you know? Yeah. Um, it was kind of that. And I think uh, if you come in with, you know, like come into anything, right? Like if you come into anything with, uh, you know, a genuine part, and, you know, you're really just kind of like doing it because you're passionate about sure. it. I think you can tell um, the first like real open source contributions I made. Um, well, I mean, I guess for the RxJS core team, like, I mean, I, you know, I, I've made community contributions, yeah. right? Sure. But yep. like, for actual contributing to open source code um, for RxJS, you know, my friends were on the RxJS core team. They just needed some help. And so I was sure. like, well, let me just help them a little bit. And then, you know, I, I ended up becoming an ArcGIS core team member. So I think that's kind of, yeah. you know, and, and that's kind of the story we hear a lot. Like, I think a lot of people try to be more intentional about like, hey, I want to get into this. Like, mm -hmm. how do I do it? How do I become yeah. a superstar? It's like, if you just like hang out and do what you're passionate about and you're a good person, then, um, you know, it'll happen naturally, I think. Yeah. So, um, when, when you first came across, you know, you mentioned your boyfriend is working in the, in the JavaScript space, were you actively yeah. in tech at the time or were you kind of like on the outside of tech and you got really interested and you decided to join it? So I, um, 
I had a tech startup that I had been doing okay. for eight years and I was exiting that tech startup. Uh, um, okay. I was on the business marketing side and, okay. um, you know, our stuff was written in, it was like Python backend, uh, bootstrap, you know, vanilla JS, sure. right. It was like years. This is like before 2015, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before, before all of the, uh, frameworks decided to show up magically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, that's kind of, you know, so like I kind of knew, but, um, you know, because I had some free time and I, I, I love this, like, you know, I talk to my friends who kind of, you know, go from one job to another and it's like, mm-hmm. man, you should just take some time off. So, I mean, it's amazing when people actually can afford to like yeah. take a month or two off and just give space. So I took three weeks off for a, um, for a boot camp to learn JavaScript and I just sure. fell in love and, you know, then I just, you know, I just, I loved it so much. I mean, I think it's because, you know, you're, you're in a certain industry for long enough, like sure. business, for example, and it's like, well, then they're done yet, done that. Right. Yeah. But like, I think with development, it's like the challenges never end in my opinion. Oh yeah. Like I, I've <laughs> had this conversation so many times on the stream where it's just like, if you like in order to be happy in tech, right? Not, not to say to be in tech, but to be happy in tech, you have to enjoy a little bit of pain, right? Like, cause learning is, learning is hard. Even like if you're very good at picking up things quickly, it's still hard, you know, and whether yeah. that's like learning a new technology or even just learning, you know, more complicated things inside of the, you know, the technology that you think you know very well. I'm very curious to know about your experience. You mentioned that you did a boot camp, right? So as somebody who, um, went through, you know, I, uh, information systems, you know, computer software engineering background in college, and then kind of went to, I kind of did that in college versus in the professional world, right? I'm curious to know what your experiences were, you know, because I hear such good things about boot camps, but for me, it just sounds like it's just, just endless, like I think of it as like a boot camp, right? Like this tiring effort where it's like, if you like it at the end, you're, this is your career. Right. Um, I think people have very different approaches to that. So, I mean, I grew up in the Silicon Valley. Now, my, my elementary school was literally one block away from Apple's first headquarters, sure. right? This group in that era. And, um, you know, so, so both my parents are engineers and, uh, you know, they were like, oh, you should become an engineer when you grow up. And so, you know, for my first year in college, I took a C++ class because they were like, oh, you should learn C++. And I wasn't really that into it. I mean, this was back in like, I don't know, 2002 or so. And um, I wasn't into it because <laughs> well, it's yeah. just, you know, it, it was hard and it wasn't fulfilling, right? I think sure. the yes. thing that really changed, because I think like 2014, 2015 is kind of where when I started getting into um, development and took that boot camp, um, you know, and, and it's very different because, you know, C++ is not front end development. No. And when I yeah. started doing front end development, the reason why it was so satisfying for me is because I was able to like, see what I was doing. Yeah. And yeah. it's like instant gratification, right? Yes. Um, so that's really what made me kind of fall in love with that. Um, sure. and I think everybody approaches boot camps differently, but for me, when I did boot camp, I basically turned everything off, and I did eight hours of boot camp, and then I worked till two in the morning, like practicing what sure. I did. Yeah. Right? So I was able to accelerate my learning really fast versus like you know some people they do the boot camp, they they're maybe like partially paying attention, and then you know they have like other stuff to do at night because mm-hmm. they just can't afford to like really immerse themselves. Um, so I really got a lot out of that three weeks. Yeah. Um, and it, it was seriously like a week of HTML, CSS and like a week of JavaScript or like a week and a half yeah. of each or something sure. like that. Um, so, I mean, I think it was a good, good experience for fundamentals. I haven't been to mm-hmm. one of those like six month immersive boot camps. Sure. Um, but I think the best way to learn really is about just uh, implementing, right? Building. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, and I, I totally get that. I think one of the things that I'm always curious too about boot camps is it's like, 
it seems to me like it's a, the final project that you have like in a college class, but you just mm-hmm. have it over the span of like a lot of weeks, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think, and I think that's really interesting. Um, I don't know, like, cause one of the things I see a lot when I see advertisements for boot camps is like guaranteed to get you a job, whatever, whatever, or they'll, they'll yeah. put, put you in a position to have a job. Right. And I'm right. always very cautious of that where it's like, because if you're going to guarantee me something and yeah. I'm for whatever reason, unhappy with the process at all, like it doesn't look good on what you're trying to, to sell. Right. Because let's yeah. be, let's be real. There's lots of people that are in tech. They're not, they don't enjoy being in tech, but they know that there's money there. They know that there's good yeah. career advancement or whatever, but they're not passionate about tech. You know, like right. people talk about the backroom developers or they talk about the people that they don't want to come out and like engage with the community and, and try to, you know, take a part of the experience of being in tech, right? They just work at tech. And I'm always very curious of like the people that go to boot camps, like what are they, what's the end game for most people that join boot camps, right? It's probably to, to get into tech to make money, right? Well, I think you can tell. So sure. um, I'll, I'll give you a fun example from sure. yesterday. So uh, I needed to open a UPS store box. Um, I okay. called one UPS store and I was like, these are not people that I'm that excited about interacting with, right? I went to this other UPS store and these guys were like, hey, how's it going? Oh, do you need to just drop something off? Like, they, you know, they knew their customers. And it's like, wow, these are these are the people that like, I would, you know, I would be excited about going into the UPS store with, right? So I think like, generally, like in work, you can tell when people are excited or not. And the people who, you know, there's, there's a difference between, hey, I'm just here to do my job and clock in. Um, and you can, you know, it's like, you're not going to get ahead, but you can say, Hey, you know what? I'm not passionate about tech, but I care about my job. So I think the difference, right? Like you look at the two UPS stores, yeah. one people, they, they, they had, it's, it's more about just taking pride. Like you take pride in your job or you don't. Sure. So it's. I don't, I think we may have lost Tracy. I think I lost you for a second. Oh, what? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know. You just completely went out everywhere. Oh, weird. weird. Anyway, yeah. so... Um, I, I heard a little bit at the beginning of it, but I think you just want to really, just really quickly paraphrase that little story. I imagine it was a great one if people didn't hear it. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't hear it at least. I don't know if the viewers heard it or not. We'll see what they say. But yeah, yeah. like literally like you disappeared everywhere, which is yeah. strange. And I'm looking at the, I'm watching the Twitch stream right now and it looked like you disappeared too. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think Sorry about I was, that. No worries. I was just saying that generally like it's about having pride in what you do. Sure. So it doesn't matter whether you're passionate or not about it, mm-hmm. but like you should definitely show up to work and like yeah. have pride in your job. Because if you're just showing up to work for a paycheck, that's totally fine. Yeah. But you're probably going to get fired if you don't have any pride <laughs> in what you're doing. You yeah. Know? I mean, that's probably a fair point, right? I, to be fair, I have worked with a few people in my career that are very, very good at what they do, but they don't seem very happy. But I don't know yeah. if that's a work thing or a them thing, right? Um, so I mean, but they're not what they do. They have pride. They don't have passion, but they have pride. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we could probably disagree whether they they take pride in what they do. I think. <laughs> I, I, I mean, they're, you know, and I know that you probably know the kind of people I'm talking about. They just seem kind of just kind of like disgruntled and like mm-hmm. whenever you come to them, if you, even if you want to ask them to go to lunch, they're just like, Rrr. like yeah. I've worked with like I've in my career I've worked with a lot of people that. Cause I've worked in a lot of like, I guess tech as a service, right. Where it's like, you know, the, the, all it is is a facilitator of what the business does. Like, you know, mm-hmm. tech doesn't, you know, innovate at all or tech doesn't, you know, bring a differentiator for the business. They're just building apps that are for the business. So there isn't a lot of pride in what you do. I feel like, you know, back to your point about why you fell, why JavaScript helps you fall in love with tech is because there was like immediate, you know, light up results, right? right? I feel at, at the same time, 
you know, a lot of people who work at businesses that, you know, tech isn't the, at the forefront, mm-hmm. they may have the opportunity to be like, okay, well, I don't get as much satisfaction for what I'm building because I'm building it for, you know, I don't want to say company A, which is in company sector or which is, right. right? So, right. I mean, it's hard because there's definitely people who love their job and love what they do. Um, but I'm always curious just about the boot camp and the people who are coming into tech from outside where it's like, what drives them to come into tech? And your, your example of like, I was able to see results very quickly where else when you were trying to learn C++, that wasn't the case. As somebody who yeah. did C++ in college, I very much agree with you, right? <laughs> but like, I'm like, um, half an hour to figure out why the hell this thing isn't loading? Hell yeah. no. That was, yeah. that was my breaking, I was like. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> And Sorry. it's it's and it's funny because I, I think you and I are of a similar age where it's like we're just getting to the point where tech computing was becoming very fast, right? Uh-huh. Um, you know, like in the you know early two thousands, like this whole the I I use the phrase web web two point like as a joke yeah. because it's still called yeah. that even though it was yeah. like twenty years ago. Um, yeah, it kind of changed everything for how people think about. What does what does I, what does tech mean? Like, what does bringing value in tech mean? It's not just as simple as like, oh, I'm building like a mainframe app that does this for some insurance company, right? It's, you know, it's, it's rich cool. experiences. Yeah, it's rich experiences. Yeah, Web 2.0. I remember because um, that's really when I started really getting um, introduced to tech in a way that got me excited. Yeah, yeah. it was like, you know, one of my friends was like. Oh, let's go to the AP, you know, this API conference. And yeah. I was like, what's an API? An API <laughs> is like the cool new, but you know, it was just kind of in that area where like, oh, mobile is a thing. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So it was it's like four I think Foursquare was was that was like what people would do, right? To I, I can't remember, but I think it was Foursquare people they would just say, I'm here eating this food. And that's like now people put pictures to it and Instagram and all that stuff, right? But I feel like Foursquare was that, yeah, yeah, was like the first app that I remember where it's like, oh, like people are going to places and then bragging about it. Yeah. Um, but like it was in it again. Like it's hard to imagine. I, I was talking with my wife a couple of days ago about this, like trying to remember a time before Facebook yeah. And, yeah. and and Instagram and like before like huge social media, like like. Even like MySpace, right? Like even before MySpace, like when we were in middle school and, and early high school, where it's like remembering what it was like not knowing what everybody was doing. And yeah. It's very it's it's almost it's very hard to remember because it's so long ago. But it's also curious to think of like you know this a technology ev- evolution or revolution or whatever you want to call it has spawned all this different um, minor syncrasies of how this world works, right? Like now it feels like we need to be involved with everybody else, right? Yeah. Or else before social medias or social networks, that, are, that wasn't really a thing, right? Yeah. It's very interesting. And obviously open source, I feel, has, you know, put a catalyst towards that because anybody, like you mentioned startups, right? I think startups are kind of built in a vein of open source in a way, right? Where you take an idea that might you you have and you want to build it upon something and create a business out of it, right? Mm-hmm. Or you have a great idea, for, you know, working with other people. I'm curious about... Your, your startup experience, right? Like, you know, you mentioned that you're from the Bay Area. You're very much, like, I think it's safe to say that you've been breathing in the uh, the startup space for your entire career, right? What yeah. was it about What was it about startups that got you interested? Was it just because it was easy in the area, or was it just the community building and the ideas? Like, hey, having a great idea and bringing it to market is really exciting. Um... So before everything, like I was, you know, exposed to tech, I was working at a big tech company. Um, it was called Force Tent Networks. So it's very, you know, they do lands, if you guys mm-hmm. know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, so I, you know, and, you know, there were all these hardware engineers and, you know, um, I was a receptionist and I was like, look at all these smart people I know that I'm yeah, seeing exactly. engineers, like, let's let's do something together. And that's kind of how I got exposed to like this API conference. And then at the API conference, somebody tweeted about me because I was a female. And uh, this Marluz, she was like, oh, there's a girl in a red dress. This is amazing, right? And somebody's like, oh, somebody tweeted about you. I was like, what's Twitter? 
And that was my first exposure to Twitter. Sure. And from there, everything just kind of snowballed, right? Because it's like, there's Twitter. Oh my God, the world is big. Oh my gosh, Guy Kawasaki is talking to you. Oh my gosh, there's VCs talking on, you know, talking yeah. on, on the internet. Oh, let me go to a VC event. So Dave McClure's, um, he did this thing called Startup to Startup, which was basically yeah. this dinner yeah. that brought VCs and um, startups together. And I got an invite to that. Then I was like, I could do this type of event. So mm -hmm. I started hosting an event for VCs and startups. That was more of like a happy hour type thing, sure. right? And, um, you know, again, just everything just kind of snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. So like, was it intentional for me to get into that? I don't know. It kind of started with this idea of like, there's a bunch of smart people. Let's stick them all together. Yeah. That's kind of how I approach open source now. So yeah. lately on Modern Web, for example, um, which is um, a meetup that we do every other month or so. Um, it's all about like, like yesterday we did state of headless CMS where sure. we brought together like strappy JS and uh, you know, Jason from Netlify and sanity and contentful um, and story blocks, right? Like yeah. find out what you're good at, find out what you're passionate about, start hanging out with people and opportunities will generally come. Yeah. But also at the same time, like protect your own happiness. Like, my life would be so different without Twitter. I would be, sure. you know, yes. married with two kids and happy, probably a housewife or something, or starting some sort of small business. Mm -hmm. Now with Twitter, I'm like, look at these people. Look at this person that just got acquired. How come yeah. I don't have six hundred million dollars? What's wrong with? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just like, you know, you kind of got to brush that stuff off and just be like look, compare yourself to who you are today and who sure. you want to be tomorrow versus like this person's doing this, this person's doing that. Like I'm, I'm insignificant, you know? Yeah. Like that's, there's a lot to unpack there. And I, I want, and I totally agree. Why don't all of us have $600 million for sure? Like that's really, exactly. that's, that's, that's the only thing to take from that entire thing is like, everybody should have a lot of money. Um, but one <laughs> of the things that I, that I immediately have, have kind of um, noticed about you is that you're, you know, to use the phrase hungry, right? You're very hungry, like as it, as it pertains to like being able to just like the hustle of like putting things together. It seems like you kind of enjoy that, right? Whether it's, you know, startups or meetups or open source or groups, like you love yeah. wrangling cats, which is a thing a lot yeah. of people don't like doing, right? Especially in tech, right? Yeah. So I can, I can attest probably your success has been to the fact that you want to do kind of know the dirty work of building things you know yeah you know, if you if you get a bunch of engineers like they'll build something cool but then what what then right yeah. like but having the engineering skills with like you know the the want to get out there and the want to build things that's that's an entirely different talent right and usually not a lot of people have them and you you know for for instance when you're talking about your startup right like that's how people build startups is there's those people out there that they have technical experience or technical acumen, but they also are really, really, really hungry. Right. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where success is bred between that, you know, especially in the tech world, like any, anybody who can has like very good people skills or very good wants to build people skills. They're usually successful yeah. in tech from my experience. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I think also one of the things that you said that was really captivating is like, you know, the community at large in tech, right? Like if anybody follows Twitter, like they know that Twitter is like the worst place on earth, also like the best place on earth. Yeah. Because all of the infighting and that, and I've got, I've done this rant a few times, but like, I feel like everybody sits in echo chambers on Twitter yeah. and yeah. the people, the people that go outside the echo chambers to actually talk with the other echo chambers, like those are yeah. the people that make tech worth it to me. Like yeah. I've always kind of, I, I mean, I love, what I do and I'll always love what I do, but I, I, I get really hate sometimes when Twitter turns into bad Twitter. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, God. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to know what your thoughts are about like how you span across different communities, right? Cause like you mentioned, you know, the JavaScript community, you mentioned 
you know, C++, you mentioned Python, right? These are all different communities that kind of sit completely away from each other, and usually they're throwing rocks, right? Yeah. Um, and it's even inside the JavaScript community, right? There's like people that are like Angular, Vue, yeah. React, right? And it's yeah. why, right? I, I want to get your thoughts on how we can do better in tech as it pertains to just not, not, you know? <sighs> I don't if that's know. too big, if that's no. too big to unpack, we can oh. do something else, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, th I think it's just kind of like, um, you know, you look at, you look at us as human beings, sure. right? Like, for example, you know, framework wars was happening, so, you know, everybody was focused on other people. Like sure. React community was focused on like the Angular community was, you know, whatever, you know, things like that versus now that things have kind of settled down within the framework world space. It's like, okay, you know what? Now there's, there's infighting, you yeah. know, like, so I think it's, you know, interesting. Like I, I, you know, I think you always have a choice in life and, you know, um, you 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 mold yourself to be the type of engineer you want, right? So sure. we do a lot of hiring at this thought, um, and we are hiring. Shameless plug. Uh, oh, please but, plug away. <laughs> but like, um, you know, you find people who are amazing generalists who are so useful in their own way, and then you find people who are like deep deep technologists in one space and that's okay too right and I think it's definitely about what your personality is so I don't think there's like a right or a wrong when it comes to how you want to approach something I think it's just what comes natural to you so like I'll give you a good example you know when I was in high school and it's so weird that I could think back on this and be like oh huh like when I was in high school I was never the type of person who like stayed with one group I always like I had three friends here, three friends there, three friends here, three friends there, right? So I always had like an eclectic mix of random people. I, I don't really belong to one group. And I feel like even in my life right now in open source and in tech, right? Like I'm part of the Angular community and the React community and the Vue community and Node and whatever else. And I'm just kind of hanging out because that's where I feel natural. And that makes me who I am. And, you know, it's valuable enough for me to do what I want to do in life. <laughs> so I think the grass is always greener as well, right? Like, yeah. Sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, man, would it have been better if I had just focused on one thing? Should I just focus on React? Should I just focus on Vue, for example, or Angular? Um, and, you know, whatever. The grass is always greener. So if you are yeah. a person who goes deep, like, and you're comfortable with that, then by all means, you know, you yeah. can be really, really amazing in just one open source community. Yeah. And I think also, you know, if I've always believed that people really fear change and what, and they mm -hmm. fear what's different, even if they never tried it. Right. We're going through mm -hmm. this thing with, with my kids where it's like three bytes before you say you don't like it. Right. Uh -huh, and, yeah. and, and, and usually what ends up happening is after bite one, they're like, Oh, this is good. And it's like, yeah, well, maybe you shouldn't argue about if it's bad before you even try it, right? Um, and I felt like, personally, that was my experience as somebody who has been a .NET developer through and through their entire career, even before their career in college and in high school, right? Um, I always like, oh, JavaScript, whoa. And, and now, like, I, I went through this process to, like, I, I wanted to, is JavaScript as bad as I think it is in my head? Like, as somebody who... <laughs> Was, was an elegant hacker at JavaScript as every person who builds on the web needs to be. But like actually understanding, you know, the different constructs of JavaScript and obviously the frameworks, it yeah. became very, very clear to me, oh, no, I was just in my own head about this is bad versus this is good. I mean, I have my preferences, don't get me wrong. But I think the biggest thing that to call out is that until you try something, you really can't bash it. And yeah. um, I do see there's a lot of, and I, I can't speak for everybody who bashes on Twitter, obviously, but I feel like a majority of the people who bash have never tried. And I encourage people to, to try, right? Even if you don't think it's going to be worth it, right? Don't trash React if you're an Angular developer until you've tried building actually something on React. 
or whatever, yeah. right? Otherwise, you're just kind of feeding a narrative that's not really fair. This reminds me of, um, you know, kind of before I, I, you know, really kind of, this was like earlier on in, in my <laughs> development career, right? Where I was like, oh, .NET, that sounds hard. That sounds difficult, whatever. Sure. And then I, I learned it and I was like, is this, is this TypeScript? Like, yeah, exactly. You know, right. It feels so familiar. And I was like, oh man, this is awesome. Like I feel so comfortable in this. Right. And you know, it, it, it goes to your point, right? Like, I mean, same thing with kind of like everything, if you don't try yeah. it and you don't like, kind of hang out in it for a while, then like, yeah. how do you know it's really terrible? Yeah. It's, there's definitely something to, I think just trying to be always learning. I think that's really important. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, if you have like this, the, this mindset of learning, I think that you're only going to be a happier person because you're like, I feel in general, even though we fear change and we fear different things, when we learn new things and that, that, that struggle, that little dopamine hit when we mm -hmm. conquer something like that's, you know, that's where the magic happens. Right. I think, you know, what, you were going to say something. I was just going to say like this, uh, you know, this, this like learning mentality, right? Like I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I, I tend to go in phases, but I think yeah. like it's really healthy if you're not doing it already to have hobbies outside of tech. So, for example, like I was burnt out on learning new tech, you know, all last year, I think like a lot of people, right, sure. just generally burnt out. And uh, what helped jumpstart me into being excited about learning again is exercising that learning that learning uh, gear or whatever you call it. Um, so I started learning like piano and guitar and oh, music okay. production, you know, and then it's like, oh, I want to learn everything again. So you kind of have to like turn on whatever that is and kind of get in the habit. It's like working out, right? Like you sure. work out a little bit and you kind of got to get in the mood and the mode and then like it becomes a habit. So like yeah. developing this habit of learning. Yeah. I got a personal question to ask. Do you sleep? Yeah. Do I sleep? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's I the thing, did. right? Like I get that quite because I have similar hobbies, right? Like I'm, I, I like if people were actually in the, see my office, but if there's guitars hanging up everywhere. So like I play guitar and there's three printers over here and like I have all these silly little hobbies. And yeah. the first thing people ask me is like, when do you have the time to do it? It's like, well, it's just a matter of, I, I just, I just do them. Right. Yeah. And I'm able to balance that with my wife and kids and, you know, sometimes I go too far in one A, but my wife is is uh, passionate enough about spending time with me that she lets me know when I'm when she wants uh, my yeah. attention. Um, yeah. And I think that's all that really matters, right? Like, as long as everybody in your life is happy, yeah. Like you can do whatever you want. It's when you start doing things that are making other people in your life not happy is when problems start to arise. Um, but my joke about you know, we do you sleep? You know, I'm even getting this kind of feeling from talking to you where it's like, you don't have like a slow, you don't have like a decelerate. Like it's always like, just go, 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 go. And that's a good <laughs> thing, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I really enjoy having conversations with people that are really passionate about everything that they do because they see yeah. the value in all of it. Yeah. I mean, I definitely have the mode of stop as well, right? So, sure. um, you know we're growing a lot at this dot and sure, you know, yeah. we've hired like what 14 people in the past two months wow. um, so you know work has definitely been exhausting and yeah. at the end of the day like literally from you know six to ten i'm like a dead human on the couch like i don't even want to like watch tv or get into something because I don't have the energy to, you know, to handle that from a, like, from a, from like, just like a mental effort perspective. Right. So sometimes I have those moments, but like, you know, I think I'm, I'm really good at like pulling myself out of those things. So for example, when I felt like, look, I'm in a rut, right. I was like, okay, let me schedule working out. All right. I'm going to working out. And you know what, even if I don't want to, I get it's scheduled. So I'm there. Um, same thing with, uh, you know, music classes, right? Yeah. I was like, well, if it's on my calendar, I'm going to do it. And then I'm 
so excited and happy that I did that. Right. So I think trying to schedule in your own happiness and, uh, you know, really taking that time to self reflect, like, what do I actually want? What actually makes me happy? Am I happy right now? Um, you know, making sure you reflect on that so that like in 10 years, you don't wake up and you're like, what the hell did I do with my life? Because I haven't been for 10 years. That's also a thing too, right? Where there's a lot of people, like I try, and I'm not a very good practicer of this, but I try to like live my life with no, I don't want to say regrets, but no like second guesses, right? Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. oh, should I have done that? Should I have taken that job? Should I have done this? Um, I'm not happy with all the decisions I've made in my life. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like I try mm-hmm. not to fret on them because it's kind of wasted energy. Um, yeah, it's where I, you are. Yeah. I think it's okay to have those feelings. Sure. Right? Like I regret not having six hundred million dollars. Well, that's and the like, thing. I also regret that. Yeah, yeah. Like, should I have joined Netflix back in two thousand nine? Yes, sure. obviously. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, should I have like, uh, you know, um, joined Cloudflare back when they were twenty people? Hell yeah. You know, and those opportunities were open to me, but you know, I, I found my own path, and it's like. I'm happy, I guess, where I am. So, you know, you yeah. should be happy where you are and you don't have to be, you know, a magical unicorn or whatever. Just, like, do yeah. what makes you happy. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, especially in tech, like, if, you you know, your example of growing up and starting in tech in the Bay Area, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's like throwing darts, right? What, what dart is going to be the dart that makes you a lot of money, right? Um, yes. And, and I want to talk a little bit you know, transitioning to kind of open source and startups, right? Like as somebody who, who has done, been, done the startup thing a lot of time, a lot, many times, and you, you run a startup business now, like how does open source help you or not help you when it comes to finding talent, whether it's, you know, building things for your clients or your customers, like how does open source, you know, how does your company work with open source or or startups in general work with open source in a successful way? Mm, I think with open source, you're generally just building technology, right? That other people are using. So whether it's startups or enterprises or anything like that, um, I think there's definitely this new wave of people really under trying to understand now, like that, like, oh, there's a lot of developers in the world and we should do startups around, you know, developer tooling, right? Developer experience. So I think that's been kind of interesting because you see a lot of innovation pushed into open source and a lot of a lot of people that are driving the innovation in open source are people who have startups. Like you look at Next.js, right? And Guillermo, sure. right? All of a sudden he has Russell and you know, yay, $50 million in in funding. And all of a sudden now it's like a thing, right? Like it's the yeah. same thing with um uh uh Isaac from uh uh, NPM? NPM, yes, from NPM, like he was just like, cool, I'm just gonna do a thing, yeah. and then all of a sudden it became a startup, right? Yeah, I mean, so all of these people though, they're just solving their own problems, yeah, and, and they I, all just become things, yeah. And I think also one of the things too is you can do open source, there are a couple of different ways, right? Like you can do open source because you find interest in something, you can find open source. You can do open source because you you see a gap in something where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, like this, why doesn't this exist? Like I should just build this. And there's also, there's people who, you know, rightfully so, they do open source as a business, right? Like right. if I can get adequate enough traction on this project right, or this idea that I have, like right. I can go and get some funding from a VC or I could get, you know, my tech could get acquired or, or what have you, right? I think that's... There are a lot of ways to do tech, and I, th- I think it's very interesting. You know, you mentioned a couple of really good examples, right? Like NPM, for instance, right? Like, I don't think he had any idea that it would be, like, the backbone of, like, yeah, now absolutely. development, right? Like, there's, like, I don't think he had any idea. And th- was he going to get acquired by, basically, Microsoft? Like, I don't think that, I don't think he was thinking yeah. of that either, right? Um, yeah. Obviously, Microsoft through GitHub, but that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Um, he was just about building something cool while he was on sabbatical like you know and same thing with like evan from view right like he's able to support his family now through you know 
this amazing framework that he's built. And, uh, you know, that's amazing. But, you know, it, it, I, I think this is kind of like the other thing that ends up happening. Like you think about things too much and then sure. it actually gets in your way versus you just do something and because you're excited about it. And that's really what catches people's eyes. So a great example is like, if you're a more seasoned developer, right? You're like thinking about what, you know, speaking at a conference, what is the thing that I can speak about that nobody knows about? It needs to be amazing. Yeah. And you spend so much time because like, what the hell is that thing? Sure. Versus like people who are just excited about tech and, you know, maybe newer developers. Like I remember I was like, oh my God, let me show you how to use the CLIs. Yep. And I, oh, I would yeah. do this stuff where it was like, Here's Create React App. Here's the Angular CLI. Here's the Vue CLI, Ember CLI. It wasn't Vue, it was Ember CLI. Mm -hmm. And I basically did a talk on, look how easy it is to spin things up. Yeah. And yeah. I was so excited about it, right? Angular Material. I was so excited when Angular Material came out. I just talked about the components you could use because it was so cool to me. And that type of content was useful. Now, right now, if I think about it, I'm like, man and if i get stuck in my own head about it like would i would i give a talk about clis like why how is that so interesting you know but like in mm, reality sure. if you stop letting your thoughts get in the way and just talk about things that you get excited about or do things you get excited about like that's when you're going to start you know getting rewarded for it hopefully it's so funny that you have a, a CLI talk because i have a CLI talk that i gave uh <laughs> i haven't done it in a long time but yeah like so, and also, uh, you know, you mentioned a couple of things that I, is somebody who ha does the speaking circuit before all of the, all of the, the pandemic -y uh -huh. things it like, I used to be in that boat too. Like the first conference I went to, I was like, why are there so many talks on this one particular thing? Like, that's weird. Like, why mm -hmm. would they do that? And then I realized like, no, like it's different points of view, right? Mm -hmm. Like some, like, and obviously depending on the speaker, right? Like I have right. a talk that. To be completely transparent, I have given this talk to other people and they have done presented at other events. Like basically they just right. change decks, right? right. And right. I always jokingly say, like, what's the difference between my talk and that talk? And it's the personality, right? Like mm -hmm. some people, maybe they want somebody that's funny. Maybe they want somebody who's, you know, a bit more straightforward. Maybe they want somebody who is has a very teacher type of style, which I think really does well at conferences. Um, yeah. But I think in general, like, the, the need to like excite people is the whole reason why I speak, yeah. right? It's not yeah. because I'm trying to find like some niche that nobody's heard of, right? Like I'm not very, I'm not a brilliant developer, but I do, like I do see value in showing people certain things and captivating minds in a particular way. Not with some, with things that are somewhat trivial, right? Like my CLI talk, like I, it was, it was, I had two slides where it was like, mm -hmm. hey, my name's Isaac, here's a demo. And mm -hmm. it would just be me do building like two apps using, you know, .NET CLI, Angular CLI, and then deploying mm -hmm. them to Azure, right? With no mm -hmm. IDs at all. And mm -hmm. it was fun because like I was able to, for 45 minutes to an hour, like just bash at a command line. Um, mm -hmm. But also just being able to show things in a different way, which is really, really cool. And I think that's kind of why open source is really fun because if you like search in GitHub, like open source project blah, right? You'll see 70 people doing the same thing. Yeah. And that's good because everybody's opinion on how things should be done should be heard. Um, doesn't mean that some, all of them are equal because some of them, you know, people put more investment of time into them. But I mean, as somebody who, you know, to go to circle back around to the, the open source work that you do with RxJS, right? Like when you put on your community contributor, community maintainer hat on, right? And you see people that come and want to help. Like, what is your first response usually to that? Um, cool. You want to help? Yeah, right. All right, let's get started, you know? Yeah. And I, um, you know, I try to help them figure out a path or introduce them to the people that can figure out the path for them. I think, uh, you know, the biggest thing about community and the biggest difference about community. So you, you look at people in this world and you look at people who have made impacts in this world, right? Um, everybody wants to contribute to open source. Everybody wants to, you know, oh, I'm going to become an ArxJS core team member. It's going to be so amazing, right? But you got to stick around. 
And if you don't stick around, then nobody's going to trust you or feel like you're dependable or reliable. And then you're not really going to get very far. So I think the idea of just like being present, you know, and continuously being present and consistent is something that, um, you know, I would really encourage people to do because, you know, I, I can't, you know, out of like 30 people we added to the RxJS Slack channel who said they wanted to help, maybe uh, four of those people actually did anything, you know, and that's, that's like that for everything. I mean, that's like that for organizing events. You know, I, ho I host Modern Web in Raleigh and the Bay Area and Kansas City, right? And it's just like, everybody says they want to help but nobody actually wants to do the work. And sure. literally sometimes doing the work is actually just showing up. <laughs> oh, for sure. And I think as somebody who who has a, a, a smallish open source project that people use occasionally, it's there's yeah. two types of people that are contributors to your project, right? Like they're the people right. who want to give feedback and maybe contribute if they feel comfortable. And then there's people who just want to use your, your service, right? Right. Like right. there's people that will come in and drop an issue for their specific thing. Like, hey, I would love if this was there. Right. And you're like, okay, well, I'm very open to you uh, opening a PR or, you know, chatting with me about what you and It's more or less like a customer service request. And that's totally right. fine. Right. If you want to use open source as a service, that's totally cool. Um, but you also can't expect me to like jump across the world for it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think one of the things that's really exciting, too, about how open source has kind of developed and grown over the last 10 years or so is it's yes. allowed people like outside of tech to use open source technologies, right? Like yeah. one of the things I always think is very interesting is like a huge backbone of like what we do as developers is built on open source, but also a huge backbone of what people just do. Like I was thinking of an example and I just lost it, unfortunately, but a tool that everybody, like literally everybody uses that was built from open source, right? I had one and I can't remember it all of a sudden. But I think the biggest thing is being able to successfully translate open source from tech to everybody. That's something that's very, very interesting to me as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you think about it, right? Like open source would not, would not be a thing if we didn't have things like... Um, GitHub, if we didn't have things like NPM and those things were only created, you know, recently, right? Like, I don't know what, 10, 15 years or something like that. Yeah. Um, and, and that's like enabled us. So it's really cool to see how, you know, one thing enables another, enables another, right? Like you look at, um, you know, you look at something like Next.js and how it's enabled other communities, or you look at something like RxJS and how that's influenced, um, you know, people thinking about observables and sure. uh, how that's influenced to like, um, you know, JavaScript standards, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Everything that is done inspires another thing and another thing and another thing. And like Instagram inspired I don't know. I mean, you could say like, you know, okay, Instagram and now there's Snapchat and then now there's mm -hmm. TikTok. Like, yeah. so it's, it's just all building blocks. And I think it's cool to just generally be a part of that, right? Like do your own thing, talk about it, share it. And then like, you know, other people will benefit from it. I was having a, a, a thought the other day about how tech is usually like first adopters of things, right? Like mm -hmm. people that are in tech are usually first adopters, but the first, the, I was thinking about, social media in general and how mm -hmm. traditionally like tech has entered into social media after somebody else, right? Like mm -hmm. Twitter was a thing before tech Twitter was a thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, TikTok was a thing before developer TikTok is now like this hilarious thing that everybody enjoys, right? But it wasn't mm -hmm. first like that. You know, what are your thoughts in general about, I know you mentioned how, you know, you mentioned without Twitter, you'd probably have an another life, but what are your thoughts in general about open source and social media, right? Like how people, sh you know, mentioning shamelessly self-promoting, for instance, right? Like I'm a huge proponent of self-promoting shamelessly, even as shamelessly as possible. But there's a lot right. of people that, that they, they subscribe to Twitter, subscribe to Twitter for their uh -huh. news, right? So uh -huh. what are your thoughts just about, you know, managing open source and using social media as a catalyst for it? 
I think the great thing about Twitter and other platforms like this are it makes the world smaller, but it also sure. shows you how big the world is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, before with Twitter, right, it was like, oh, look at these startups, look at these venture capitalists. You know, that was like my my first thing into sure. Twitter. And then it was like, oh, man, look at all these cool people doing cool tech things. This is awesome. You know, and you're able to kind of like build that community around that, right? Um, you know, you kind of are seeing this in Clubhouse right now where every single person on that is positioned as an influencer. Sure. They're the coolest people in the entire world. And you look at that and you're like, oh my gosh, I can meet these people and talk to these people and they are at my fingertips. Yeah. And that is so powerful. So, you know, I definitely encourage people to just like message people, talk to people, you know, some people respond, some people will not. But like the, that, that one thing that happens, like I remember, for example, the reason why I went to Web 2.0 Conf by O'Reilly, you know, back mm -hmm. in the day yep. was because this random girl was talking on this random podcast. I was listening to an afternoon and she said, I'm going to do a giveaway. And I responded to some Twitter message that where she was doing the giveaway. I got a free random ticket podcast, to Web 2.0. Yeah. I, I met you know, some of the people who, you know, were, are still in my life there, you know, like, um, you know, one thing led to another, like I met Sean and Alistair who wrote this O'Reilly book about me metrics and analytics that led me to meeting, uh, Jeremy Edberg, first engineer at Reddit. He became one of my best friends still is, you know, he was one of my first investors in my startup. That's awesome. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So like everything just again, compounds on top of each other. Um, but you know, it just started off by just wanting to hang out, <laughs> you know, like it wasn't yeah. that anything mind blowing. Right. Yeah, no, I think that's really, really cool too, where it's just, again, community building, right. Which is like, I think a, the big reason why a lot of us, you know, gravitate towards open source, right. Where it's, Hey, there are people like me out there that like, you know, writing software for fun and if, or not even writing software for fun, but being contribute to contribute to software for fun outside of our work jobs. Right. right. Um, right. I'm very envious of people that have turned open source into a career. Um, right. but, yes. but at the same time, I, I always feel like if I was to do that, I probably wouldn't enjoy it as much, which I think exactly. is probably, which is probably fair. Um, some people might disagree. They're like, no, I love writing code all day at work and then coming home and then writing a bunch of code, not for work. Um, right. and that's just my thing. Um, I do, you know, to get back to other hobbies, things like we had a couple people in the chat mentioned, Oh, like having non-tech hobbies is really good. Like, you know, our friend Cecil, he just commented about how, you know, he only read tech books. So his decision yeah. to start reading, you know, you know, other, other books that aren't directly in tech, like that's something that's, you know, I think that's really cool. You know, or you know, you mentioned that you're getting into music and music production, which I am super envious of. Like, I I hack away at like Adobe Audition like all the time, and I'm terrible at it. Um, yeah. But it's it's fun. Like learning new things just doesn't have to be in tech. I think that's a, a really good yeah. thing to call out. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's this um you know idea of you know the more you expose yourself to different ideas. I mean, you know, I was just watching uh, The Bachelor and, you know, they had a, they, you know, there's a lot of like racially charged conversations happening sure. around The Bachelor this season. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like the whole thing about it though, right? And and this is with tech, it's, it's just like, the more you expose yourself to other opinions, the more you listen to other things happening you know, everywhere, you know, the more that influences you as an individual it's true. and, um, you know, the better you can become generally as an individual. So I think like exposing yourself to whatever, you know, reading fantasy books, learning music, learning French, doing sure. whatever, right? all of those things kind of make you a better, um, you know, open source contributor generally. Yeah. So yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah, and that's awesome. And you know, as we're wrapping up, I think you know one yeah. of the big things that I do want people to do is Tracy's hiring. So you oh, should yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, so I so I dropped the URL to your site, this.labs.com. 
if yeah. anybody, if you're in tech and you're looking for career opportunities or you just want to chat with somebody cool like Tracy, like she's available and she's hiring some really good folks. Do you want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, what kind of roles you're looking for and what kind of people um, would sure. be great fits? Yeah. You know, I think we are just looking for good people to work with. So mm -hmm. Angular, Vue, React, um, you know, we're looking to grow our executive team as well. Um, but, you know, just like startups, like I really believe that building businesses is really about the people around you. So just finding cool people to work with um, sure. is something I'm really passionate about. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of articles online about, you know, oh, I don't get rewarded for glue. Right. But like, <laughs> sure. Glue, yeah. The glue yeah. work that people do is really what like builds companies. Yes. You know. Like we've hired senior software engineers that are amazing, but you know what? They're doing their jobs and that's amazing. But what's even more amazing, for example, is some people on our team started a coffee break channel and they're hanging out and having coffee breaks together over Slack. Yep. Like that is, that is what, that's like the 10 X, you sure. know? Um, so yeah. And, and you know, we're fun to hang out with. So definitely apply or if you need any, help when it comes to development you know we're also available for hire we got to work on some really cool projects like twilio cloudinary wikimedia google wow. um that's awesome you know yeah it's 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 definitely fun and i just i love it and i love our people so that's awesome and one thing that i have to ask because of the, the world we're in so uh, are you friendly with remote work oh my god yes great. so great my last startup, we had an office and mm -hmm. honestly, I couldn't stand it uh, <laughs> because it's just like, whatever, right? So we're fully remote, we'll always be remote. I, I told myself I would like never go into an office ever again. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, that's definitely been true. <laughs> so, well, I mean, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. I think you picked, you picked a good mindset to put yourself in and especially since you're being forced now, right? Um, yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, one of the, you know, as we're parting, I, you know, if, if people are out there, they're looking for something different and something fun, like this dot labs, I took a look at their website, um, earlier today, just to reintroduce myself to kind of some of the stuff Tracy was doing. And it looks like a fun place to work. And they're like, she said, she's doing some really captivating work with her customers, which I think is super awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. No problem. And before we go, I do always have one last question for my guests. So mm -hmm. if you could think of one word or a very short phrase that you would use to describe open source, what would it be? <laughs> yes. All right. Chaos. 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 No, that's so good. <laughs> that's so good. Well, some people, they'll, like, they'll, they'll kind of piggyback on top of the community stuff. So let's say community or right. collaboration. But yeah. chaos, is, I think, is a perfect word for it. And it's beautiful <laughs> chaos at that. Yes. Awesome. So Tracy, I want to thank you so much for joining the stream. Um, for everybody else paying attention, like thank you, Jen, for joining us. This was a lot of fun. And yeah, enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.